bet you motherfuckers will too Because it's time for the fuck to die What the fuck is still so Senior nuclear advisor to the Japanese Prime Minister is resigning, alleging the government ignored his safety advice. Toshisho Kosako said the wrong radiation limits were set for his schools near the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant, endangering children's lives. The Japanese government denies the claims, insisting it followed expert advice. The plant has been releasing radioactivity since being hit by an earthquake and tsunami in March. The operator of the stricken Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says it plans to double the number of pumps at an underground tunnel connected to the number two reactor building. This is to speed up the removal of highly radioactive water. Huge amounts of highly radioactive water are hampering efforts to restore cooling functions to the plant's reactors. Tokyo Electric Power Company is using a single pump to transfer the water from the number two reactor building to a waste processing facility. It plans to start using two pumps on Saturday. It stopped the transfer for a while on Friday to check the facility and hoses for leaks. TEPCO has pumped 2,400 tons of radioactive water out of the tunnel since April 19th. It hopes to double the flow to 20 tons per hour so as to transfer a total of 10,000 tons by mid-May. TEPCO is also preparing to pump radioactive water out of an underground tunnel connected to the number three reactor building. It's installing hoses running from the, number, from the tunnel to the waste processing facility. The company is also considering the construction of an underground storage tank for radioactive water in the event that the pumping does not go smoothly. The Japanese government is taking a tough approach in dealing with Tokyo Electric Power Company. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Edano says TEPCO cannot be exempt from paying compensation for the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant accident because the March 11th disaster was exceptional. While the earthquake and tsunami were very powerful, Japan's diet had warned the nuclear plant would face problems if an enormous tsunami hit it. If the warning had not been issued, the damage could be described as unexpected. But TEPCO cannot be exempt from its responsibility just because the company was not prepared for what had been flagged by the diet. Japan's Act on Compensation for Nuclear Damages allows those responsible to be exempt if an accident is regarded as an exceptionally massive natural disaster. TEPCO has implied this act should be applied to what happened at Fukushima Daiichi, but Edano's comments show the government would rule out that possibility. Two workers at the Fukushima nuclear plant have been found to have been exposed to radiation levels close to the legal yearly limit. The Tokyo Electric Power Company measured the internal radiation exposure of the workers in April. It found the amount of internal and external radiation that the two employees had been exposed to exceeded 200 millisieverts. The reading for one of the men reached 240.8 millisieverts. The legal limit of radiation levels that workers can be exposed to in an emergency is 250 millisieverts. The two workers were temporarily hospitalized in April after they worked in highly radioactive water in the basement of a reactor building without wearing proper protective gear. TEPCO says workers are transferred out of the plant once their external exposure reaches 150 millisieverts. Eight workers in total have been relocated so far. The utility says it will manage the situation with utmost attention to make sure that workers are never exposed to radiation levels above the legal limit. A vice president of Tokyo Electric Power Company says he believes the nuclear crisis at the Fukushima nuclear power plant is a man-made disaster. TEPCO Vice President Norio Tsuzumi visited Itate village in Fukushima prefecture on Saturday and apologized to about a thousand villagers who gathered to hear him speak.
A resident asked Suzumi if he thinks of the nuclear crisis a man-made or a natural disaster. A villager asked me if I thought it was a natural disaster. Personally, I think it was partially a man-made disaster. All of the 6,000 residents were instructed to evacuate by late May based on accumulated radiation exposure levels caused by emissions from the Fukushima Daiichi plant. It's impossible to evacuate until the deadline. I make a living in this village only just because I have my own house. After the meeting with local residents, Suzumi explained to reporters why he feels it's a man-made disaster. Some say the nuclear accident in Fukushima was beyond any expectations, but I think adequate safety precautions should have been in place. Tokyo Electric Power Company is preparing to transfer radioactive water from the number three reactor of the disaster hit Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Restoration work at the plant has been hindered by highly radioactive water that has been accumulating in a number one to number four reactors. The utility has given priority to transferring the most highly contaminated water in the number two reactor to a temporary storage site. The operation was suspended for maintenance on Friday but resumed shortly after 2 p.m. on Saturday. TEPCO dropped the plan to add another pump to quicken the transfer. The utility says it needs to set aside space in the temporary storage site to transfer contaminated water from the number three reactor. The water level in the reactor's tunnel has risen by 12 centimeters in one week. The power company plans to start transferring water from the number three reactor if the water level continues to rise and is installing a hose that connects the tunnel with the temporary storage site. Japan's Nuclear Safety Agency has told two reprocessing units for spent nuclear fuel to prepare for a possible suspension of external power. We had already told electric power companies to make sure they had two backup power systems in place. We have now ordered the reprocessing plants to do the same. If all power lines went down at the reprocessing units, cooling would stop and hydrogen would be produced. The reprocessing plants are in Tokai, Baraki Prefecture in eastern Japan, and the village of Rokkasho in northern Japan's Aomori Prefecture. The agency is asking the units to prepare mobile generators and pump trucks, as well as equipment to remove hydrogen. After the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, Japan's nuclear safety agency told all nuclear power plants to prepare emergency safety measures to secure power sources. The agency is asking the reprocessing facilities to present their safety plans as soon as possible. It says it will assess whether the measures are appropriate by the end of May. TEPCO is studying the possibility of sending more current and former employees to the plant. The company is considering about 3,000 people as potential candidates. They have previously worked at the plant or have been trained in nuclear-related matters such as radiation monitoring. About 1,000 workers of TEPCO and its contract companies are currently working at the power plant to bring it under control. But the work is expected to take a long time. TEPCO laid out a plan on April 17th to stabilize the reactors in six to nine months, and the radiation level there is still high. The government recently raised the legal limit for radiation exposure during an emergency from 100 to 250 millisieverts. On Saturday, two workers were found to have been exposed to more than 200 millisieverts of radiation. Another 30 workers or so were exposed to radiation in excess of 100 millisieverts. The power company considers it necessary to have more people on site to proceed with the operation while ensuring the safety of the workers. The operator of the troubled Fukushima nuclear power plant has decided to send workers into their number one reactor building as part of its efforts to cool the reactor. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, increased the amount of water injected into the number one reactor on a trial basis for two days starting Wednesday. It wanted to test the feasibility of its plan to cool the fuel rods by covering them with water. 
But because TEPCO could not determine the water level in the containment vessel, the company needs to install a water gorge. TEPCO also says filling the containment vessel with water won't be enough. The company is considering installing a heat exchanger that cools the water inside the reactor, though that plan would require checking pipes for damage. On Monday, the firm will start preparatory work to install a device that can reduce radioactivity by filtering the air in the building. We plan to reduce the density of air contamination in the building by about 95 percent and expect to start cleaning the air in five days. TEPCO says its workers will install the device in the reactor building within a few days. It will be the first time its workers have entered the building since the hydrogen explosion on March 12th. It would be a step forward if TEPCO can install the devices to reduce radioactivity, but the company will still need to establish a system to steadily cool the reactors. TEPCO has begun transferring highly radioactive water accumulated near the number 6 reactor to a temporary storage tank. The operator of the troubled power plant started moving the water in the turbine house of the number 6 reactor to the tank on Sunday afternoon. At the number 2 reactor, TEPCO continues to pump out highly radioactive water that has accumulated in a tunnel connected to the reactor to an on-site waste processing facility. TEPCO says about 2,500 tons of the water has been moved into the facility since work began on April 19th. TEPCO also says that a woman employee in her 40s was exposed to radiation of 7.49 millisieverts, one and a half times the national legal limit, while she was working at an in-house medical office of the Fukushima plant. The woman continued to work there until March 15th. Four days after the disaster, then she was moved to another office. She is described as having no apparent health problems resulting from the exposure. TEPCO says it is the second case of a female worker being exposed to radiation exceeding the legal limit and that no woman has been allowed to work at the plant since March 23rd.